mentioned, but I find this really interesting, which is barefoot running. And uh, um, your sort of uh, company, Barefoot Athletics. Yeah. Uh, B-E-A-R. And the tagline is optimizing the human to ground interface. We've talked about this a little bit with uh, the power lifting. How do you think about the the foot ground interface? It's interesting that we know that we should train all these parts of our body to be able to be stronger, be more resilient, like, but we think that the foot is different, that we need to package it and modify it. And somehow that that's the science of making, you know, it healthy, mm -hmm. um, where I challenge people think about that. Like first thing you do in the morning is roll out of bed and put your weightlifting belt on and wrap it on tight and wear it till you go to bed at night. Do it with your shoulders, your knees. Put it, wake up and put some knee wraps on, okay? And elbow wraps and see what happens. One, you'll get weaker, you'll lose movement capacity and you'll start affecting other areas of the body very negatively because they will start picking up the compensation for those joints that are not moving properly. This is it. What shoes are for is to protect you from the environment, from cuts and abrasions and heat and things like that. But the foot, let me, the mind blowing is like every other area of the body. You need to use it and you need to strengthen it and you need to learn to control it. That's it. That's all I have to say about the subject. Okay. <laughs> it's that simple, but somehow we have been sold entire industries like the orthotics industry. It's completely false. Meta analysis of the data shows that orthotics do nothing beyond temporary relief from pain over a six, eight week period of time and provide no long-term benefit. And I can't tell you how many people I've eliminated back or knee or hip pain from getting, from working on strengthening and controlling the foot and ankle complex. We believe we've villainized and said a low arch is a condition that needs fixed. Mm -hmm. Like when it really is just controlling the foot and ankle complex and how they relate to each other and how we use that. Is it like, go put on boxing gloves in the morning and do that for the next 20 years and see what happens. It's not about finding the right shoe that fits because your foot has been deformed. And so I'm not like some wacky goo, like, oh, you gotta be barefoot forever or do this. Like, no, I'm just saying, go spend some time using it. Mm -hmm. Strengthen it, learn to control it and you will work better in a shoe. But the whole running shoe movement with the raised heel, that was the person that, that suggested that, that in, to Nike way back when they were trying to figure out what to do, the reason, and he says it's, it's the, the worst thing that he ever did um, because we were coming from an era of people wearing heeled shoes, which by the way came from um, stirrups way back in the day. That's where the whole heel came from is to go into stirrup, but then it went into fashion. And then the running craze started coming around in the 70s they're, uh, they're starting to push this to the general mass population and they realized that they were causing injuries and like, what are we going to do? Well, that's because everybody was in this position and had a shortened, uh, shortened calf muscle. And it's like, well, the workaround, let's just put a heel on it so we don't injure them. That's it. Yeah. And now because the raised heel, you got to raise the toe. And then now with that, if you go stand on something and pull your inner toe in and uh, in a squat position, just reach down and do it, you'll see that you have no control over internal and external rotation of your of, of of your leg, you don't, and or your foot, and you actually have to put a support in mm -hmm. for the arch to be able to passively control those structures. It's just band aid on top of band aid on top of band aid. Use it, strengthen it. If you want to wear some shoes because they look good or fancy, I'm like I have no problem. I mean, I, I go out on a wife. My wife will put on some high heels every now and again. Like, but all I'm saying is use your foot. My thousand pound squat, my thousand pound deadlift were done barefoot. I'm not trying to sell you shoes. Mm -hmm. Go do it with no shoe. That's what I've been promoting. I did that for six years and I promoted it. But people ask me like, well, what do I do? Because my gym requires shoes. <laughs> okay. Where do I go? And, uh, and then I go, well, you know, you could pick up these uh, other finger shoes or whatever. And they go, man, my wife won't have sex with me if I do that. <laughs> and I go, I know, mine either. Like, trust me, I'm not making this up. Everybody in that market markets to one segment and they're still missing some gaps.
because they they still have a little bit too narrow of a, a toe box. And if you're lifting, you have the opportunity to really get that splay and start working on this stuff better. So um, I just wanted to create a shoe. These ones are odd colored because uh, it's a partnership with Kabuki. Normally we've got a black or a gray, uh, low top, high top, sticks to the ground for lifting so we can do that. Mm -hmm. And very pliable, it's a moccasin. Mm -hmm. It's a modern day moccasin, uh, but looks okay that you can wear it around in other areas if you, if you so choose. Like. Do you know what the number one healthcare cost in America is? What's that? Diabetes, mm. uh, heart disease, cancer, low back pain. Hmm. Now, what do you attribute low back pain to? Well, it's attributed to a lot of things, um, but inability to control spinal position, um, which starts happening from uh, some breathing issues. Uh, it also happens from the foot. Mm -hmm. um, so there's a lot of stuff, but did everything that I do actually focuses on improving this. Yeah. Uh, so uh, the, that, and it all starts with the feet. Th this is one thing. Like yeah. this doesn't affect breathing, but um, so it does actually affect breathing to some extent and spinal stabilization. So the raised heel and toe will make you stride further mm -hmm. um, because of just how it operates. Mm -hmm. But that overstride is a result of opening this. Mm -hmm. So we open the pelvis and diaphragm. Did we talk about that and the impact that that has for mm -hmm. controlling and spine? Yeah, yeah, I think we touched on that. Yeah, yeah. Um, but it, it's, all this stuff plays together. So the gate affects that, and so the shoe affects the gate, and then so it's all connected. All connected. Let me be very purposeful with some conversation here, though. Sure. We've talked about periodization. This was a big gap. So um, people go, well, yeah, well, when people started running with those, they started having injuries back when uh, the finger uh, company produced those and didn't do the education around this very simple concept. Yeah. You do not walk into the gym if you haven't squatted and start squatting 225 from, yeah. from Max Rex every week day or every day over day. Yeah. And that's what people did because they did, weren't told that you need to build the capacity to do this. You go wear these and walk around in your office or wherever all day long, your feet are going to hurt. They're going to be sore. Do it for 10% of your time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do that for a month, then add some. That will build the capacity to do this. And then that's going to start having the ability to strengthen, manage the foot. And there's a whole lot of other stuff. I've got videos on things that you can do. Mm -hmm. Buy whatever you want or just, just spend some time out of them. Like... That's all that I want people to do because it is so simple and it has such a profound impact. Yeah, it does. I What I did... Uh...